Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. Okay, so apparently Trevor Noah did something called the impossible conversation about guns in America. Now, I don't know how much of a gun um, person um, Trevor Noah is, but I do know how much of a gun, a gun person that um, Coleon Noir is. So, of course, if he not going to come correct, then Coleon Noir is going to light his tail on fire. So that's exactly what he's about to do right now. Um, that's exactly what we about to check out. So y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think about this one right here because Coleon Noir is pretty much going to just let him know um, the different parts of, um, of what he said that's true, different parts of what he said that's not true. He's going to, he's going to school him and he's going to school me as well. Because I don't know if y'all know, but I'm about to go gun shopping, dog. And I'm going to let Coleon Noir's videos help me out, too. And I've been reading up on gun laws as well. So, man, I'm about to be shocked, bro. So let's go and get into this. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. And hang on for the end so we can really have a conversation. Let's go. Everything else America believes is possible. We're like, yeah, we're going to go to the moon. We're going to go to Mars. Oh, we're going to cure cancer. We, oh, it doesn't mean we can't do it. We can do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to... Then when it comes to guns, all of a sudden, so many people are like, it's impossible to stop it. You just, you can't. There's so many. Oh, what are you going to do? No, it's not that Americans think it's impossible to stop. It's that we don't believe <laughs> making people helpless and unable to defend themselves is the way to do it. You're rich. You can hire private security to follow you around for 24 hours, seven days a week. Most Americans don't have that privilege. So we own handguns, shotguns, and AR-15s to protect our families from criminals and our country from tyrannical governments. You may not like that, yet here you are in America making millions by giving us backhanded compliments and then trying to shame us because we won't bow down to daddy government and say, please take our guns away from us and protect us. The irony. People try and make it a game of- I just have to say, yeah. That's it. I just want to say, yeah. That's my contribution because I think he did a hell of a job, but I'm paying attention right now so that I can say what I want to say later. Whack-a-mole when it comes to solving problems. You know, you propose any type of solution and they go, well, that wouldn't have solved this one. This wouldn't have stopped that. And you're like, yeah, but that's, that's not how solutions work, right? There is no problem that is going to be solved by one solution. A lot of the time, big problems require a multitude of solutions. And what you do is you try and fix it incrementally, step by step. Trevor, your only solution is to further restrict the constitutional right. We aren't playing whack-a-mole, we're playing Dungeons and Dragons, trying to defend the castle that is our two-way rights that you and your mainstream media cohorts keep trying to siege upon at every opportunity. You're not incrementally trying to solve a problem, you're incrementally trying to ban guns. More people are killed with handguns and rifles. If you're willing to ban rifles, why wouldn't the next incremental step be to ban handguns? We're not stupid. And look at cars, friend. Ah, I see what you're trying to do, Trevor Noah. You're using fallacies, bro. I got you. This is not a regular problem. This is the actual Constitution, actual Second Amendment. So, is that... Yeah, this is the Second Amendment. So at the end of the day, it's it's a lot. You're not supposed to touch at all, <laughs> at all. So when you're talking about solutions, it should be completely separate in the in away from that. Leave that alone. Is there anything else we can do outside of that? <laughs> all right. It's a simple idea, all right? When they started off, it was like a bucket with wooden wheels. You just crashed and you died. <laughs> that was it. And then over time, people said, well, why don't we improve it? Why don't we say it has to have brakes? Well, we never thought of brakes. <laughs> let's add that. Let's add brakes and let's add this and let's add seat belts. We've gotten to the point where cars drive themselves now. And still we say, we've got to write laws. We still say, let's make sure that a self-driving car adheres to certain standards. Let's make sure that it hasn't stopped. And yet somehow with guns, it just stopped. You know, it's such, it's such a strange argument for me. Oh, but that wouldn't have fixed it. Yeah, but if you see a loophole, why not fix it before it leads to a problem that it could have stopped? The problem with the car analogy is that when a drunk driver kills someone with their car, we don't try to ban cars. When people kill people because they were street racing, 
We don't try to ban sports cars. When a self-driving car kills someone, we don't try to ban self-driving cars. However, because some mass shooters have used AR-15s, you want to ban AR-15s. Guns have improved in safety the same way cars have. They're more reliable and they have better safety features. Everything we did to make driving safe focused on improving the safety of the item and education. Everything you want to do to make gun ownership safer focuses on restricting guns. I always say the same thing. Oh. I want to say this. Um, I actually enjoy Trevor Noah. I think he's hilarious. I think he's intelligent. I just think that we don't know, we don't know what we don't know. I think this is one of the cases where he really doesn't know. All right? And I think that Coleon Noir is, is really teaching him. I hope Trevor Noah watches this so that he can learn something from the young guy because... That gentleman knows about guns. Trevor Noah does not. And that huge analogy, analogy about cars and the improvement of cars and all the laws that are being added to in order to keep things safe and better, he ran off the road with it because he didn't include what they're trying to do right now to the Second Amendment, and that's ban things and remove things with the cars and whatnot. So, yeah. You got to try that again, brother. It's a slippery slope. Which guns do you ban? You know, like, which guns do you want to ban? It's like, well, just start with the ones that people seem to be using over and over again. You heard him say to start. To go into schools to kill a bunch of children at one time. Oh, but that won't... What if they come with it? Yeah, then we'll deal with that. You know, it's a lot harder to commit these mass shootings when you don't have certain types of weapons. I told you, they want to ban guns incrementally. It doesn't take a genius to see that his argument makes no logical sense. It's a known fact that handguns are the most common weapon type used in mass shootings in the United States, with a total of 146 different handguns being used in 98 incidents between 1982 and June 2022. These figures are calculated from a total of 129 reported cases over this period, meaning handguns are involved in about 76% of mass shootings. Yet Trevor says we should ban the guns used most in these types of shootings. Those are handguns, but you're talking that. about banning AR-15s and then telling us, We'll deal with the rest later. That means you're arguing from pure ignorance and that you don't know the data, or you're arguing from pure emotion because AR-15 scare you, or you're doing exactly what I know you're doing. You're being deceptive in that you know it's easier to go after AR-15s now, only to come after handguns and X. The most deadly school shooting in US history was Virginia Tech. Message, I hope, hope, hope Trevor Noah watches this. Wow, I just now heard the, um, the conservative twins talking about this exact same thing when they was talking about Joy Behar's um, comments she made about if black people get guns, then they really going to, and then everybody started clapping, not understanding that a lot of black people are out there in certain neighborhoods that's committing all the crimes, like 50% of the crimes, 20% of the people in the, in, in the country and committing 50% of the crimes. I'm talking about homicides. So, and they're doing it with handguns. So, yeah. The shooter killed 33 people with handguns. You want to tell me again about how having certain guns that make it easier to kill a bunch of people need to be banned? People are like, oh, it wouldn't fix it. Yeah, nothing fixes everything. But you got to start, you got to start somewhere. They almost use like the gym, the gym argument. That's what it is. You know, when you're trying to get in shape. <laughs> it's because why don't you go out? Nah, I'm just not going to change anything. Nah. <laughs> Push-ups don't help. Yeah, push-ups on their own don't help. And, you know, walking on its own, do its own doesn't help. Drinking more water on its own doesn't help. You combine these things step by step, day by day. And then you wake up one day and you're like, well, wow, I look a little bit better than I did before. I feel a little bit better than I did before. It's not going to happen overnight. It's incremental. My man need to have Corleone and Wild on this show so that they can have a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think that would be good so that Trevor Noah could get a basic understanding of something that he either one have no um, understanding of, or I hope, see, I think, I think Trevor Noah is actually a good guy. I just think they, he leans more with his emotions as well, but I don't think that he's intentionally doing something that his, his channel want him to do or party he prefers want him to do. I don't think he's intentionally doing that. I, don't, I think he's smart, but I don't think he's, Nah, I don't think he's he's doing that. I just think he's operating off of ignorance and um and emotions when he's talking about this right here. 
But it's really interesting that it's the one area where so many people just want to throw their hands up. Trevor, you talk as if we don't have any gun laws in this country. We have over 300 federal gun laws and thousands of gun laws on a state and local level. What do you mean we need to start somewhere? The first piece of national gun control legislation was passed on June 26, 1934 with a National Firearm Act. We started over 80 years ago. You know what's ironic about Trevor's gym analogy though? The one thing he didn't mention was diet. Anyone who knows anything about losing weight knows you can't outwork a bad diet. Yes, more gun control, i.e. lifting weights, makes you feel safer, but if you don't deal with the root cause, i.e. your bad diet, nothing is going to change. As a matter of fact, it'll probably get worse. The same people, by the way, where when they first were told that this was an undocumented immigrant, they were quick. Yeah, they were, all of a sudden, they were like, oh, we, we gotta do, we gotta shut down the borders, we gotta, this is why we need stricter, go, go. and then they were like, what? Oh, no, it was, it's not what we, look, this is not the time to politicize things. Or... <laughs> we don't know what could have been done, and we, there's nothing that could have been done, and we gotta realize that bad people are gonna do bad things. Oh, but when you thought it was somebody who came across the border illegally, then you, you said there was something you could do. Well, yeah, well, that, 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 that. He's not lying. There were indeed pro-gun people who did this, but let's not act like the AR-15s are to you what certain immigrants are to the people you were just describing. Y'all both do the same. Once you hear about a mass shooting, you start screaming about assault weapon bans until you find out they used a handgun and then, oh, you get real quiet or you just ignore it all together. But here's the big difference. Foreigners don't have a constitutional right to enter the U.S., but citizens of the U.S. have a constitutional right to keep and bear arms. So you're the only one making an argument to infringe on a constitutional right, which requires an exceedingly higher standard than, let's just try it and see if it works. And the saddest My man calling on the wild, man. This dude is ready for what <laughs> He's like, bro, give me some more. Give me some more of that BS you Go ahead, give me some more so I can sh shut you down, man. <laughs> I like this type of information. I like this. Right it's here. a small group of people. They need to talk, though. Most Americans they need to on talk. the same page. It's like a small group of people who've managed to shift the Overton window on the conversation around guns. Most gun owners are logical about this. Like, gun, like real gun owners go to the range and they shoot. The, you should see how they respect weapons, you know? They'll even be the ones who go like, yeah, maybe we get rid of some of these guns and maybe we change some of those laws and whatever. But then there's this small little group, this lobby that manages to shift the entire conversation in the country. And he can't do it. Trevor, stop. Hold up. Is that a small group of people who don't want change? Because he's acting as if most of the people that he know who are serious about their guns and serious about gun laws don't mind changing it. I need to know that, man. That manages to shift the entire conversation in the country. And he can't do it. Trevor, stop patronizing gun owners and people in the middle. If the majority of gun owners agreed with you, you wouldn't be making this video. You only say this as a shaming tactic to the people who aren't gun owners but are in the middle on this issue. They are the ones who really have the power in this conversation. You're trying to get them to feel like, well, if the majority of gun owners agree with Trevor, then maybe I should too. If anything, this shows that you have very little respect for the people in the middle and their ability to think for themselves. I think it's safe to say I know way more real gun owners than you and none of them agree with banning AR-15s or any of your proposed gun control measures. So stop lying. Some wow. Hold on, where is that? Mic drop. Huh? Invite him to your show, Trevor, so you can get that business. He's going to give you that work, bro. One said to me uh, recently about this conversation. Work. He's like, why do we bother? It's like, why do we keep having this conversation? I was like, hey, man, I don't know. Why did Martin Luther King Jr. bother, you know? Why did Nelson Mandela bother? Why did Mahatma Gandhi bother? Why did Harriet Tubman bother? Why, you know, it's like, the, it's you have to keep bothering. Same. It's That's not what hope same. is. It's not just wake same. up and you try again no. and you try again and you try again and you try again and then, you know, one day you succeed or you die of old age. Trevor, Martin Luther King fought for civil rights. Nelson Mandela fought for civil rights. Gandhi fought for civil rights. Harriet Tubman used a gun to fight for civil rights. You, my friend, are doing the opposite because the second amendment is a civil right. And you just spent the last four minutes fighting to restrict it. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment. Oh, wow. Country, except make sure y'all like and share this joint. And make sure y'all like and share this joint. Not, not the, not the um, reaction. You don't have to do that. Um, you can watch it. 
that's beautiful and if you do want to share it that's cool too but most of the the meat of the value that we received today came from um Coleon noir's channel so if y'all can go there and like that um like the the cha um the video and subscribe to his channel and show him some love man um that's that'd be that'd be dope i hope he and trevor noah actually have a conversation because i think that will be amazing too um it will be a, a really a really dope meeting of the minds but one mind he like we sometimes we need to realize although we watch the sport whatever our favorite sport is we do not know more than people who are actually playing that sport right so if your job is to be a comedian and to host your own show and this that and the other that means that you are very you are capable of speaking at great length about many different topics um and only but a few are you um an expert of well you just crossed over and i'm talking to trevor noah now you you just crossed over to one of those topics that um that you are not the expert of and it's time to show a little bit of respect for those who actually know what they're talking about and understand that this conversation is a little heavier than other conversations it's way heavier than going to the gym way heavier way heavier than that two thousand 3,000 um, pound car that we are all driving around um, that's that's also a weapon you know what I mean people have mowed people down with their cars many accidents many 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 accidents they say more accidents happen in cars than they do in airplanes like it's much safer to travel in an airplane than it is a car you brought up those analogies that's the only reason why I'm bringing them up so now when people are sitting here talking to you about real stuff real sugar honey iced tea it will behoove you to um to take some notes and take it seriously and not stick so much to your base when it comes to what they want you to say and what they're willing to clap for i get it you gotta pay bills bro who am i who am i to tell you what to do what i will say is that um this this conversation right here this topic needs more research done and it needs to be done by you, not your people that go out there and get information for you, but you need to do the work. You need to dive in and you need to get this information. And then once you get the information, don't sit quiet with it. Cut on your camera and talk about it. That's pretty much all I have. All right. I want to hear whatever you guys got to say about this in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video and hopefully inside the Patreon as well. You all have been amazing per usual, man. Love y'all.